poopy doo. Oh. Yeah. Greetings. Back again. Last time we were together, I showed you my new rickshaw honeybee case, and inside was my Edison Menlo Sweet Honey Pen. This pen has a 1.1 millimeter Yovo stub nib and currently has inside of it some beautiful Noodlers Apache Sunset ink. Now let's take a look, see how full this is. And it's got plenty of ink. Uh, this is a standard international cartridge inside of here. And uh, there are plenty of threads on this pen. So if you were to want to ever eyedropper this pen, it would be easily accommodating to that effort. So once again, a single twist, and the pen is closed. Back into the case, we'll get back to that in a minute. So, today we're going to be looking at the Noodler's Ink. It comes in this box. This is their standard box, as Apache on the top, with some uh, cowboy boots. This is the same box that pretty much every Noodler's Ink comes in, so we don't need to look at that. Here is the bottle. This is a three ounce bottle of ink. This is a very good value in ink, by the way. And I've used a little bit of it. It comes in a nice glass bottle with a very solid feeling plastic cap. So today I thought what we would do is we would try drawing a picture with this ink. This ink is not a very water fast ink. It is called a shading ink. Now a shading ink, apart from a sheening or a shimmer ink, has different colors that it casts as it builds up in layers. So this is just a cheapy art artist loft pen I got, Michael's or whatever, and we'll be using that to paint a little bit with. And I'll set that aside. This is the sampler that the original ink came in that, that I sampled the last, like, two years ago. But I keep this cap around because it's great for refilling the pen on the go. And in this case, since we're going to be painting with it, we want to have something to dip in. This is my Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper. It's not that great for for doing what we're going to do, but it works. So uh, let's find uh, an empty page here. Uh, toward the back, toward the back, and oh, here's my crows. I like my crows. And uh, she's on the other side of this, but uh, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll use this side of the paper. Now, we want to get everything set up here. So uh, we want to make Apache Sunset. So we will simply take our ink, and I'm going to open this bottle and use it straight from the bottle. I have the pen currently, not the pen, my brush is dry and has no ink on it. So I'll just take it straight from the bottle and block out some shapes here, some rough shapes and um, a horizon here. We'll put in a horizon and get some basic idea. And with the wet, we'll add some wet to this and we can create a nice light sky. You can see the difference in the color in the ink already that when it's a more of a glaze it is very light a bright yellow if I take a little bit off the cap here you can see that it's definitely darker but you don't want to be putting your paintbrush back into the ink that's why I have this sample which I have put ink into I got the ink out of that bottle by using a syringe now I'm not a junkie I have these for transferring ink into international cartridges so let's just cap this up put that aside and we will uh, try to open, oh, let's see, yeah, we're going to open this, and uh, we will use this for dipping our paintbrush in. But before we do that, there is one more item that we need. Typically, I would never put my sampler down because they tend to tip over, but uh, I need to get a, a, a mop, a um, paper towel, always a useful item in these types of situations. So, one of the things that I would typically do is I will always hold on to my sample bottle. Now, this kind of Bristol paper, you can see it's already starting to rise up. I'm getting a little bit of, of a reflection off my light. hope that's not going to be a problem. But, again, this is a shading ink, meaning that in different layers, it can have these different shading qualities, and it's really quite fun. The ink is not very water fast, so you can see I can move it around quite a bit, especially when it's wet. And I can either lighten it or I can darken it depending on how much water I either want to add or how much ink I want to lay in or even draw up from a lower area. If I just wet some spots, they'll actually the water will actually draw the ink up because it's not a particularly water fast ink. You can see how it just kind of blossoms out and does its own thing in the areas that are wet. This can be a problem when you're using this ink for writing though because the uh, the effects 
are a little um, a little random and so you can't always know what the ink is going to do and actually that's part of the fun for me is just the lack of control we pretend to have control over shading ink but it's really going to do whatever it wants to do and uh, that can be part of the enjoyment and again that can be one of the things that makes it a little difficult to work with this picture is a little out of balance let's let's see about maybe adding something over here on the other side but first let's uh, just try to lay in a little more color and see how that ink sort of bleeds out into the water this bristol paper absorbs the ink fairly well and so the the, as the ink dries, it'll become a little more fast. And even though this ink isn't waterproof, it will lead a, a shadow. It will lead shadows in. It'll leave shadows behind as the ink dries. And even if it gets wet, it will leave a shadow, and you can see that. So I would just want to block in a little bit more mountain to balance this image out a little bit here. And we'll get a little more definition to our horizon line here. Don't want to lose track of the horizon. This uh, blot in the top is kind of bugging me. Let's see if we can lift some of that ink out and use the dry towel. Sometimes we get some nice cloud effects when using watercolor. But with ink, it's not quite the same. And again, this Bristol paper isn't really conducive to lifting so much as uh, watercolor paper would be. But I'll go back to the cup and we'll darken in some shading, shading here. So we get some nice colors of shading and we can bring this ink up into a darker orange. It'll actually come up almost red if I can get enough layered in here. It's still pretty wet, so it's wanting to feather out and follow the water line. But uh, we're getting a kind of a very pleasant looking sort of a misty haze here going on. We can add, try to add a little more detail in here, try to bring this mountain up a little taller. It's still a little too short. Uh, I think I need to darken this up a little bit, but uh, we'll try to get some of the things going on here. And uh, we're getting a little blossoming coming out from that other section. You can see how the ink just really wants to do what it wants to do, and we're sort of uh, at its mercy on where it plans to go. We have some control, but <laughs> not a whole heck of a lot. And again, that's the fun of a shading ink, that uh, it pretty much behaves the way it behaves and we need to follow the properties that it wants to create not necessarily control what we want to do with it so in this kind of a application that's what we get that's starting to look like something now and uh, blot my paintbrush and continue to add more ink here try to get a little more contrast to darken up these values back here. Now these values can be tricky because again as the ink dries it's going to change in intensity too. Sometimes an area that looks very dark will end up pooling away and leaving an, another area that was fairly saturated a little lighter. So go back in and try to add more values to these other areas and see if we can't keep our keep our hazy, misty sunset going here. Try to increase that uh, sh shading effect there. And uh, down here we get a little cast shadow going on here, but we don't want so too much harsh shadow as it wouldn't be indicative of an actual misty sunset. So let's put a little more foreground and try to uh, make some details in here and again add a little moisture. Keep from getting this paper too wet because we don't want it to pill. When writing with this kind of ink, it, it uh, can be a bit of a challenge because if your paper doesn't have good contrast with it or if you're using an ink nib on your fountain pen that isn't particularly wet, you're going to have a problem getting uh, dark enough values to be able to make the writing easily, easily visible and easy to read. So I have uh, found that I like to use my Clairefontaine paper or Clairefontaine paper which uh, gives me really good contrast it's a very white paper and uh, these inks are very wet as they are for fountain pens as I said this is a shading ink not a not a shimmer or a uh, or a sheening ink those 
types of ink actually have particles in them, uh, microscopic particles, and they can beat up in the feed. So again, uh, this is an ink that I would use in a more expensive pen because it doesn't have any particles in it. It's just a dye-based ink, and uh, it's pretty easy. It comes out of the pen pretty well, but the color can stain a clear feed. So if you have like a a, a window in your pen, if it's a or if it's a, uh, a demonstrator pen, you might not want to use an ink that uh, is like uh, that can leave a yellowy sheen inside or a yellowy cast inside of your inside of your converter or or inside of the barrel of your pen if it's a if it's a piston filler. Try to make a few clouds here in the sky. Try to develop the sky a little bit more, and uh, you can see how that uh, even though the water has been drying up a little bit you can see how this just wants to bloom up into those wetter areas on the top that haven't quite dried out and we can use that to our advantage and uh, make these clouds a little more descript it's uh, a lot of fun to try to figure out where the ink is gonna go and try to uh, make some details here the shadow should be on the tops of the clouds not at the bottom unfortunately a couple of these clouds look like they're upside down but uh, such is life and uh, that's the randomness of what we're doing here just trying to make a little noodler's apache sunset with some noodler's apache sunset and uh, again want to draw some ink down so you don't want to place the water where the ink is that you want to dilute you want to place the water where you want the ink to go and try to use it to wick use the water to wick that ink out of the paper and move it down i can agitate it a little bit with my brush but again with this surface of this Bristol paper, that can be a touchy proposition because it can pill up. So let's uh, let's always close your ink whenever you're done using it. You always want to make sure that it's closed. Even if we're going to go back to it, always close the ink. Let's see if we can add some detail with our honey, sweet honey pen. And uh, hopefully the ink will take. It's a little drier. Normally I would hold the cap. You can post to this cap, but I don't like using it that way. I prefer to use it without the cap. And I would hold the cap in my left hand, but I want to hold this this uh, tongue depressor so that I can keep my work flat while I try to draw on it and keep my wrist off. Let's see if the pen is running. Yep, we're good. All right, so let's, uh, let's try to put in a little detail here. We'll try to add some add some uh, sharp contrast at the top where the mist maybe hasn't risen up quite as high yet we still have a, a good sunset cast on our hillside here so we want to make sure that we've got some more contrasted shadows against our beautiful apache sunset sky again this uh, ink is very diverse and will shade from a very light almost a lemony yellow into a nice deep orange and even a red see we can get some we can get some nice reddish values out of this if we continue to layer it up. Oh, my my nib is starting to pill the paper a little bit. The uh, paper is pretty saturated here. But uh, we shall soldier on here like uh, John Wayne in a, in a Utah sunset here. So we'll uh, continue to add a few details, add some, add some rocks here. And uh, I like this ink quite well. I use it in this stub nib pen because it's a fairly wet writer. And as a wet writer, I'm able to get some nice sheening contrast. Not sheening contrast, excuse me, shading contrast. We'll add a little bit of reflection as if there were a, maybe a heat pool down here or perhaps some rocks in a riverbed or an ancient riverbed back in the Pleistocene era or something. We'll try to get it to bleed into these lighter areas, give us a little more contrast up in these clouds. Yeah, this is a very fine ink and a very good value. The bottles are large and seal very well. Some of the bottles that I've received from other ink companies are plastic and and they do their job. They keep the ink protected from sunlight and do everything they're supposed to do. But, but at the same time, there's something a little nicer about a glass bottle. And these bottles have a good cap on them as well. I don't like the softer caps that feel like they might crack if I try to screw the cap down a little tight. Those, uh, those are always a problem. The little metal caps and uh, ink being a little bit... Uh, uh, a little uh, corrosive can sometimes rust the edges of the caps. I've had that happen with older bottles of ink, especially especially black inks that are made with more corrosive elements in them. 
So uh, I think that'll pretty much do it. Let's close the beautiful honey sweet pen, put it back into its B case, and uh, we'll try to maybe just uh, soften up some of these shadows. We'll dab some water on. We don't want to do this too much because it can start to lift lift the ink up into the brush. But uh, again, I don't want to agitate the paper either because it's beginning to build. So we just want to soften up those edges, soften up those edges. And, uh, well, I think uh, that's about it. I think that'll do it. So, um, yeah, always remember to clean your brushes. Always remember to clean your pens. Clean your pens regularly. And I guess uh, let me sign my name. We'll just um, we'll do that with a calligraphy pen. I'll use my good old calligraphy flex nib and some Higgins white calligraphy ink that's always... A nice contrast against the oranges here, if I can get it to run heavy enough. One of the problems with that, of course, is that this is very wet. Normally, I would wait till it dried a little bit, but uh, in the interests of video, let's just let's just get get her done, as they'd say. So here we go, and then it comes out fine. I I can see that contrasting up. I I don't know if you can see it in the image very well. It's it's kind of bright, but it looks good. And that's it. So, Noodlers, Apache Sunset, I give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Slide and shimmy, shake it too. Spring it all around like you love to do. I said, honey, poo poo be doo to you. I said, honey, poo poo be doo to you. Yeah.